Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense. In this video, we're going to go over how to secure your Windows 10 PC. Many people have heard many reports and rumors about the Windows 11 machine coming out later this year. And many people are not happy with Windows 11 and they want to keep their Windows 10. Much like how Windows 7 users like to not update to Windows 10 when it first came out. So I'm going to go over how you can secure it better so that you can continue using Windows 10 past the introduction of Windows 11 and possibly after the end of life of Windows 10 in coming in 2025. So let's begin. The first thing you want to do is to check for all your updates and make sure you download any updates before the end of life of 2025 because most likely Microsoft will shut down those update servers for Windows 10. So let's look at what we have. So the first thing you want to do is in the search bar, put in update and click on check for updates. And then a window will pop up that will give you a list of all the updates that Windows have found that need is needed for your machine. See here it says that I have critical updates and then it's going to download it automatically. So while that's doing that, we're going to go into the advanced options and we're going to look at some settings here to make sure that they're possible they're they're correct so the first thing we're going to look at is to receive updates for other microsoft products when you update windows if you use other microsoft products like office and things like that it's a good idea to keep this checked on so that those products also get updated when your operating system gets updated but if you do not have any other microsoft products you could turn it off but to be safe, you might want to just keep it on just in case you have something that you don't know that you need. And the next thing is if you are over a limited bandwidth internet connection, meaning that you only have a certain amount of data that you can use each month, you might want to turn this section on that will allow Windows to be a little bit more mindful when updating your computer so it doesn't constantly use up all of your data bandwidth for the month. But if you don't have any limitations on the amount of data that you can use them each month, you can turn this off and just let Windows just update as it comes. And the last thing you want to do is to check on the show a notification when your PC requires a restart to finish updating. This setting is useful for some of the updates that require a reboot in order for the update to finalize. So some of those updates do download on your computer, but until you restart your computer, it doesn't finalize the update. So it could leave your computer vulnerable if you don't regularly update your, uh, uh, reboot your computer. So having this on, it will, the windows will give a little pop-up that says, hey, you need to restart your computer in order for this update to finalize. So while it's continuing to update, we're going to go on to the next thing that we're going to look at, which is to uninstall any apps that you're not using. So the way you can do that is you hit in the settings section right here. And then in the home of the settings, you're going to hit the apps section. And then here it will list all the different apps, applications that are installed on your computer. So what you do is you just scroll through here after it's done populating. You just scroll through here and then just uninstall any applications that you're not using. This will lessen the likelihood that some unknown computer program that's on your system that you never use has a vulnerability and never gets updated because there are many things out there that do get used every once in a while but if you don't know it's there you don't know what if you need to update it and it may have a vulnerability on it that hackers know about and will use that to gain leverage into your computer so just be mindful of all the different apps that are on your computer and then just uninstall the ones that you're not using some of them are windows integrated so you can't uninstall them but others like OneNote you can just click uninstall here and it will remove that unwanted and possibly unused app that you have. So the next thing that we're going to look at is a privacy setting. So in the search bar, 
just hit privacy and then it will open up your privacy setting so the few things that we're going to look at the first thing here is let apps use advertising id to make ads more more interesting to you based upon your app activity this is basically just spyware so you just want to turn that off and let websites provide locally relevant content by accessing my language list again just turn that right off and let windows track app launches to improve start and search results just turn that off and show me suggestions of contents in the apps just turn that off I have all these settings turned off because there's no reason for it it's just basically just advertising tracking that windows does for you so the next thing we're going to look at is the windows defender so in the search bar we're going to put windows security we're going to click on that and some things we're going to look at is the antivirus protection and the firewall settings so here here is the antivirus here it will tell you if you need any more updates for different virus uh, protection and here you can do a quick scan every once in a while like once a week i do suggest doing a quick scan just to make sure that everything's up to date but the things that we're going to look at is the virus and threat protection settings so we're going to manage that settings and you want to make sure the real-time protection is turned on this will have your windows defender constantly looking through your computer and making sure that there are no uh, viruses that are just pop out of nowhere and it'll deal with them as they pop up um, you can have the cloud delivery protection on or off depending on how comfortable you are with it going out to Microsoft servers but at the end of life you might want to turn this off because those cloud protection things most likely will disappear too and then automatic sample submissions you can turn that round that off if you if you're not comfortable with certain settings get sent to Microsoft for annihilation to make sure that the samples that it thinks are viruses get sent to there so that Microsoft can say okay this is a virus we need to update our tables and go on and so forth another good setting to go through here is the ransomware protection so here you have an option called controlled full folder access what this is is basically a protection for folders so that if you get infected with ransomware it does not affect your protected folders so we're going to turn this on and it's going to ask for permission to make changes it's going to yes and then what we're going to do is look at the protected folders and again we're going to put yes and here are all the different protected folders that microsoft has so that anything on the in these folders cannot be modified by ransomware and only through uh, apps that you choose what can affect these things so you can also add protection for other folders that you add that do not appear in this list by clicking the add a protected folder here and then windows will ask you okay which folder you want to protect and then it'll add it to this list so here we go so then say we have something in here and then we're just going to say select folder and then it's going to add it to the list right there 3d objects boom protected so then we're going to hit come back and then under this option here allow an app through control folder access here are all the different apps that will have permission to make edits to those to those um, trusted folders if a controlled folder access has blocked an app that you trust you can add it 
as an allowed app here. So basically what you do is you click on an allowed app and then you can either have an option to put in recently blocked apps or browse all apps and choose which ones that you want. You can, when starting to set this up, you could use the browse all apps and then pick the ones that you think you're, you're going to use the most. And if you do encounter some that are blocked, but you want them to be trusted, just come back to this setting and then hit the recently blocked apps and then just pick the ones that were recently blocked to add them into the list of trusted apps. So basically if, if the app is not on this list, it will not be allowed to make any edits to those protected folders. So the next thing is we're gonna look at the firewall. And here you can allow different apps to go through the firewalls to do different settings by clicking the allow an app through the firewall in the firewall and network protection section. So we're gonna click that. It's gonna take a second. Okay. And then this window will pop up and then you could choose different uh, apps that you want to allow through the firewall and pick some that you may not want. Like you may not want Paint 3D to go through, so we'll just uncheck that and then it won't be allowed to send any data through the firewall. This is very useful for things like remote desktop. If you don't use it, just turn it off. A remote assistant, assistance, if you don't use it, turn it off. Just go through each of these settings and turn things on and off that you feel comfortable going through your firewall. If you don't feel comfortable for it to go through, just disable it and don't allow it to go through. So then when you're done, just press OK and then all those things are come through. All right. So when the end of life will happen in 2025, you might want to consider third party antivirus and firewall protection. Depending on those companies, some may stop their support and some may not. In a later video, when it comes closer to the end of life, I will be testing which antiviruses and firewalls will allow you to continue support after the end of life. But the ones I do recommend for the antivirus is called Bitdefender. It's a very good antivirus program that does protect you, your computer very well. It is a little bit uh, resource intensive, but it does a really good job. And if you have a computer that's a little bit older that may not have the resources needed for Bitdefender, you could use one that's called Webroot. And that's very, that is very, res, not as resource intensive. So that those are the antiviruses that I, that I suggest. Now for the firewall protection, there are two that I recommend. One being zone alarm and another one being glass wire. They both do have their own different takes on the firewalls and have different learning curves but i will go over those separately in a different video and link them down here when they're completed and i'll show you how to set them up and how to use them properly with windows 10. so the next thing that we're going to look at is we're going to change if you do use windows microsoft accounts for your user you will want to change that and make it a local account. So we're going to go to settings. So in the settings, we're going to go to the accounts and then we're going to look and see if it's a Microsoft account or a local account. This is a local account. So it says here, local account. But if you did have a Microsoft account, you just click a button here that says log in or sign in with a local account instead and it will change you from a Microsoft account to a local account. 
again, the advantage of this is when Windows 10 ends of life, most likely these Microsoft accounts will not be allowed to log into these windows and that will lock you out of your system. So make local accounts and it also makes it a lot safer so that your operating system is not connected to an online system. The next thing you want to look at is your sign-in options. When you make a, a local account, you have different options. If you are going to use a password, just make sure that you have a really strong password and you can save it in a, a password manager so that you don't forget about it. The password manager I suggest is called Bitwarden and the best thing about Bitwarden, it syncs across multiple accounts so you can also have it on your mobile phone so that when you want to log into your PC you just pick, pull up your mobile Bitwarden and look at your password and put it into your account if you can't memorize it. Another option is using a security key that's most, most of them are like uh, the Yubi key or the Titan keys. What this does is you have to physically plug in a USB device into your computer that authenticates you. And if you don't have that key, you're not allowed into your computer. These are most useful for laptop computers, but you could use them for desktop computers. The one I really don't recommend is called the Hello Pin. It's really easy to break into pins, but if you do have one, I do. If you want to use a pin, I recommend using ones with that allows you to have uh, letters and numbers so that it makes it a little bit more complicated. And again, save that into your uh, password manager so that you don't forget about it. And if you do forget it, you can always look it up on your phone. So with the local account and the strengthening or your sign-in options the next thing to look at is to look at your account type so back into the settings and then accounts right now this account is an administrator and you do not really want to log in as an administrator this will allow this could allow uh, malware to sneakily install itself onto your computer without your knowledge. So what we're going to do is create a second administrator account and change this from an administrator back to a standard user. So the first thing we're going to do is go into family and others and then you're going to add someone else to this PC. It's going to bring up a window a window that makes it so that you have to create a, an, a Microsoft account or log in using a Microsoft account. So to get past this, because you don't want your administrator to be part of the Microsoft account, just say, I don't have this person sign in information. And then it's going to bring up this one to prompt you to create one. So what you're going to do is add a user without a Microsoft account. So click on that. And then you're going to type in a username for this account. So for my purpose, I'm going to do std admin and then put in the super secret password and then just pick a random one my pet's name i'm going to make it some really weird thing a tree and then what city was i born in i was born in moon and third security questions, childhood nickname. I was called House. Not really, but just make some stuff up. And then that is your new local administrator account. So right now, I think it's just a standard user. So we're going to click on that and change the account types. We're going to change it from standard user to administrator because this will be your local administrator. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is change you from a administrator back down to a standard user. So what we're going to do is we're going to sign out here. 
sign up. And then we're going to log in as our administrator. We're at the super secret password. Click that. It's when you first come up, it's going to come up with the screen to say it's going to get things ready. So we're going to skip over that. Now that we're on our administrator account, we're going to go and change our regular account into a normal account. So what we're going to do is go back into the settings and then hit the accounts. Go down to family and others. Pick our administrator account that we're going to change into a standard account just by clicking on it, hitting change account types, and change the account type from administrator to standard user. Hit OK. And then that is now a local standard user. And so now we're done with this local administrator. We're going to go back into our local normal account. So we need to put sign out. And we're going to go log into our normal standard account. So now that we're back to our standard account, the last thing we're going to go over is creating what is known as a system restore point. Now, you'd want to create restore points every time you make major changes to your operating system, like adding new software and or deleting software or anything that's going to be a major change that you want to create like a snapshot of your operating system so that if a virus comes along and totally destroys your computer you can just revert back to that snapshot and create or restore your computer back to those settings and <clears throat> to do that we're going to go to the search bar and put in restore point and you're going to click in create a restore point and since now this is a standard account it's going to ask us for the administrator password to make any changes so just put in your administrator password hit yes and right now this is turned off so what we're going to do is you're going to configure it you're going to turn on the system protection and then you're going to put in the max amount of usage that you put in for your restore point so just be in mind that you want to make sure that your restore point is not too high that it basically uh, takes up the entire hard drive, but not so low that it doesn't have enough memory to create a restore point. So a good balance is around 20%. And then you just hit OK. And then every once in a while when you make your major changes, like installing new software, deleting old software, any major revisions of certain files that you want to keep, just hit the create account or create a save point. And then you just name your save point, uh, save point 9-6-2021, hit create, and it's going to go through the process of creating a save point for you. Now, this isn't really a good idea for backing up files. To do that, I recommend doing the 3 to one backup method, which is you're going to have create three different copies of your data or your data. Two that are going to be saved locally on two different soft or different uh, hardware 
backups like one being a hard or an external hard drive and another one being a cd or one being a a, a nas and another one being a thumb drive and then you're going to have a third copy that is going to be saved off-site, like a cloud service provider, or maybe you want to put your backups on an external hard drive and keep it in a safe deposit box or at a friend's house to keep for safekeeping. So that way, if your other your first two get destroyed, you still have that third option to go out and get it. And with that in mind, all of these things will set your computer to be more safe and secure against hackers. So this concludes this tutorial, and I look forward to making more in the future, and see you in the next one. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.